So now that we understand the basic features behind viral replication, we'll continue our look at this idea of reproducing and replicating viruses by entitling the next flowchart Viral Replication 2. And we're going to subtitle this flowchart a specific type of viral replication process known as the lytic cycle. This is the lytic cycle, and this cycle, this viral replication technique and process, is usually going to be uh, studied and referred to and looked at in bacteriophages, in viruses or phages that infect bacteria. So, the lytic cycle provides us a very nice, concise, and easy to understand mechanism specific mechanism that tells us how viruses replicate in a simple and observable bacteria uh, medium, let's say. So, in the lytic cycle, we'll get right to it, we're going to have the following. The lytic cycle results, and it must, and this is why it's called the lytic cycle actually, it results in the complete and utter death of the host cell. So there is no ifs, ands, or buts about this. This results in the death of HC, our host cell. And because it has the death component to it, we consider the fact that anything that undergoes the lytic cycle is going to be a virulent uh, phage. Okay, Virulent phages, or viruses that are virulent, cause death. And if they cause death, they are probably going to be uh, utilizing the lytic cycle in this death-causing mechanism. So what is this death-causing mechanism? Well, it is a uh, very nice stepwise process that really shows us the viral replication in some great detail. Now, the steps are the five main steps that we went over in the basic feature section align very well with the basic steps to understand about the lytic cycle. Step one is simple. It's the attachment. This is the idea of recognition. And this happens when you have a bacteriophage that notices a bacteria that it can infect and it will attach to that bacteria. Once attached, that virus, that phage, will want to enter. It does not actually want to enter, but what wants to enter? There's going to be the entry of the phage, which is just another way of saying virus, bacteria virus. Uh, the phage DNA is what's going to enter. And also, this is interesting here, entry of phage DNA and also the degradation, the breakdown of something very important to the host of the host DNA. So the mechanism that this involves is very, very uh, violent, let's say, where the phage DNA not only just enters, but once it enters, it actually has components with it that come and degrade the host DNA in preparation for step three. Step three will be if you, well, if you've degraded the host DNA and you have some phage DNA, that phage DNA will then be utilized that phage DNA will take over the host and the host's machinery, the ribosomes, the DNA polymerase, the RNA polymerase, all those enzymes will then be involved in step three, which is the synthesis of viral genomes and proteins. Key word here is viral, viral genomes, not host genomes, and viral proteins, not host proteins. So this is a true takeover event that we talked about previously. Step four, this is a, a step that I find fascinating that I can't believe happens. The idea that viruses, they have this self-assembly programmed into them. So it's one thing to make these proteins and genomes for the viruses, but the viruses themselves self-assemble everything, including things like the tail of the bacteriophage, the head of the bacteriophage, the fibers of the bacteriophage. All of these components self-assemble beautifully into the actual phage structure. And step five, it's finally going to be release. And this release step is a complete bursting of the cell. The cell completely bursts. Its membrane completely erupts with tons of viruses that burst out through process known as cell lysis. Okay, The cell will lyse. 
And when cell lyses, this is the verb to lyse, um, that will be the idea of the lytic cycle. That's where the name essentially comes from. When the cell bursts with all these viruses, these bacteriophages that just burst out after this attachment entry synthesis, self-assembly, and of course, release. So this sounds uh, like a uh, very, very nicely and uh, strongly created attack of bacteria. So why aren't all bacteria in the world dead? Well, that is because bacteria themselves are not just going to sit around and let viruses infect them. Bacteria also has the ability to defend. And this is something we actually talked about in Biology 115 uh, a little bit briefly, but it's coming back again because bacterial defenses provide us a, a great interesting component to study as microbiologists, let's say. Bacterial defenses include the fact that natural selection, NS, that all-powerful mechanism of evolution, actually favors certain mutants, let's say, certain deviations, certain mutations. Things that are mutants uh, are those that would be, let's say, without surface receptors. So this is the host that we're talking about right now. If the host is without certain surface receptors recognized by viruses, it's without and this sounds like it's bad. This is, uh, you know, you don't have surface receptors. That's pretty bad, right? But natural selection says no. Natural selection favors mutants, bacteria mutants, without surface receptors recognized by viruses. Why would natural selection favor these? Well, that's because the viruses don't have any surface receptors to recognize themselves. So natural selection says, oh, since viruses can't recognize you, you must be successful. You're going to pass on your genes. You're going to survive. Essentially, what I think of this idea is that, i.e., natural selection favors those who can stop step one. And if you can stop step one, let's go back over here, attachment, you can stop all the other steps. And that's something that we see through natural selection. It's a very powerful, powerful mechanism that we see. More specifically, we can get into some microbiological details, such as restriction enzymes. This was from our uh, technology, biotechnology lecture, our DNA technology lecture. Restriction enzymes are naturally occurring enzymes that bacteria have within them that recognize foreign DNA, so recognizes foreign DNA, these enzymes float around, they recognize foreign DNA, what do they do when they see it? They destroy it. Recognizes foreign DNA and destroys it. So that's good for the bacteria. But again, the question that you should be asking as a curious intellectual biologist in the making is, well, how does it know which DNA to degrade, to destroy? What's the difference between virus DNA and bacteria DNA? Why doesn't it just eat itself up? And that's because of this very important protection mechanism that the bacteria has involved. That's the fact that it protects its own DNA by methylation. It methylates its own DNA, and thus it knows, the restriction enzymes know, do not cut this DNA. Do not destroy this DNA. It is not foreign. It is domestic. It is the DNA of the bacteria itself. The lytic cycle can be uh, well illustrated and understood, and I highly suggest, again, to look at figure 19.5. It shows these five steps in a nice illustrative form to give us a nice overall visual understanding of a nice and uh, pretty simple process known as the lytic cycle of viral replication.